Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today we are doing the long-expected what to buy first when on a budget video for Star Wars Legion. If you're starting out with the Grand Army of the Republic, the clones from the Clone Wars. If you guys are starting out as a different faction in Star Wars Legion, I have different videos for each of those. I encourage you to stick around, check out my Legion playlist and all of the different uh, videos we have available for those different factions. You can also jump in our Discord. I have a video library there that can help a lot of people kind of sort through all of the videos I have because I do have a lot. We talk a lot about Star Wars tabletop gaming here. Um, and I do a lot of giveaways, too. Uh, we are doing a massive giveaway for the brand new Star Wars game Shatterpoint for a core set for that in the form of a $165 Amazon gift card. It's the latest giveaway. That's going to run until uh, Shatterpoint comes out. So you got plenty of time to enter to win that. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. I typically announce winners at the end of videos. So uh, by all means, watch all the way through. See if at the end of a video you happen to win. Uh, and that's kind of how that goes. Plus, I would like for you to watch all the way through. Hopefully, there's enough content here to keep you engaged. And if not, to let me know what I can do better. Uh, I also want to thank today's sponsor, Luxury Playstyle. Amazing full metal tokens, fully compatible with Star Wars Legion. As you get better and better into this game... And if you decide down the road that you want to upgrade your tokens to the best tokens on the market, check out LuxuryPlayStyle.com. They are absolutely amazing. Full metal, double-sided, and you're going to use code VIP when you're there to save 15%. Well, you, you can. I mean, if you don't use that code, you won't save 15%. So definitely use that code and uh, check them out. You're going to love those tokens. All right, so... We're going to be starting out with the Republic, and uh, we're, you know we're going to go through my recommendations now. You certainly don't have to go with particularly my recommendations, but I, I'm taking value, cost, effectiveness, and a little bit of fun factor in into effect here. So, for example, um, due to some recent changes and my personal uh, playstyle uh, preferences, I, I don't have Padme Amidala on this list. She used to be, she was on previous lists, but she's been changed enough that she's not as good now, um, or not as essential, I would say, like with the Republic, for example. So she didn't make the list this time, but that doesn't mean that I'm saying you shouldn't get her. Um, she's, she's certainly not bad. I just don't uh, I, I just don't want to, you know, put her on this list. It doesn't mean that she's bad. It doesn't mean that she's good. You should be playing Star Wars Legion to have a good time and have fun. And so, by all means, let your own fun factor uh, take priority over these recommendations. So, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. So, we're going to start off with the the Clone Wars core set. Now, there are different entry points. This one might not be best for everybody, but this is what I usually tell people and recommend people get into the game with. This isn't going to get you a full army, though. Uh, but what this is going to do is it's going to get you a like a half-sized army led by Obi-Wan Kenobi, two clone uh, Phase 1 clone units, and also you're going to be getting that Bark Speeder bike in here, too. So you get a little bit of a lot of different, a little bit of a, a variety. And you're going to be uh, having also a Separatist army in here as well. you got General Grievous, some B-1 battle droids, and a Droidica. So you're getting some pretty cool models in here, and it's also enough for you to play against a friend, try a little sample tabletop game, you'll get dice, range tools, um, some slightly older rules, the rules have been updated a little bit, <clears throat> but it's at least enough to get you familiar with the game. Definitely suggest you head over to AtomicMassGames.com and check out the latest rules, and as well as errata, and lots of updates that are going to be there in their Star Wars Legion section of AtomicMassGames.com. Definitely recommend that for all of Atomic Mass Games' games, uh, even though at this one it'll say Fantasy Flight Games on the bottom. If you're like brand new getting into these hobbies, companies switched over a few years ago, so a lot of the product you're going to see will say Fantasy Flight Games on it, and a lot of the newer product will, also, will say Atomic Mass Games. Still, okay, it's the same game, so just if you're brand new, you're going to see some of that. Don't be too confused. Uh, that's normal. <laughs> so uh, I think the clone set's a great value, though. It's 119 uh, you know, the, the buy-ins for these games tend to be uh, over 100 bucks. Uh, that's typically the buy-in point, uh, usually around 200-ish to kind of get started with a full-size army. Um, now, one of the things that can save you money with this, you're getting great value with the number of stuff that you're getting here, but you're also going to be able to potentially split a core set with a friend. Maybe you have somebody else who's thinking about starting separatists, or maybe you want to get multiple 
um, factions. Not everybody stops at only one faction. So this will give you some additional uh, usage on top of that. Um, an alternate start point might be the 501st box. This is a Battle Force box. It's a little more expensive. It's $150. Why is this more expensive? And uh, why would I also recommend this? Well, <clears throat> two reasons that make this oh, a great pack. Uh, one of those reasons is the fact that uh, this doesn't have any duplicates from the core set. So this is a great second purchase uh, because if you have the core set and then you add this onto it, you're going to have a lot of options and you can pretty much stop there. You're going to have a really uh, robust army that you can do a lot of different things with. And so I, I really like that. Uh, you're going to be getting Anakin Skywalker in this pack. You're going to be getting three Special Forces units of ARC Troopers in here. Uh, you're also going to be getting uh, what th two uh, Phase 2 Clone Troopers. Those are more advanced than the Phase 1s that you're getting in the other core set. And you're getting an ATRT. Uh, very cool stuff that you're getting in here. Uh, a lot of like elite units in here, and there's no crossover. So some of the other faction packs that we've looked at have some like duplicates, some things that are duplicated in the in the regular core set, and this doesn't have any of that. So uh, you know when I've started out in other war games, I've always kind of looked for those battle boxes or bundle boxes, and uh, it's it's nice when you have something that has like a whole bundle of stuff, and there's nothing that is already duplicated in your collection. So that's a great thing about this. Another great thing about this is it all offers a, a kind of a sub-faction of the 501st. So basically, you're going to be getting some special cards in here that you can run if you wanted to run a, a unit that's just the 501st, right? So it's just like a, a sub-faction of, of the clones. And the 501st allows for a lot more narrow and very more specific stuff. I don't think, like, for example, you can't run Obi-Wan Kenobi in the 501st, but you can run Rex and things like that. Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, but you, again, you can use all of these guys. You don't have to run them in 501st. You can just run them as normal Republic and then have Anakin and Obi-Wan team up together in a build or something like that. So you can, you have a lot of different options once you add this to your collection. And while the price point is high on this, and these are the two most expensive things on this list, the, like I said, the buy-in is generally pretty expensive for a game like this. So if you were hoping to get started in Legion for less than a hundred dollars, um, I mean, you, 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 unless you're finding some pro, some product on sale or buying aftermarket, maybe a used product, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to do that. Uh, although it, I mean, it is possible, but I mean, this is kind of if you're like trying to buy new or looking at like MSRPs and things like that. Um, so once we get past these two, and again, if you want to start with this, you can start with the 501st. Uh, this will be more of a complete army, and then you can add a lot less. But you would also then need to get the essentials kit because you're going to need your basic rules, some basic gameplay cards, range tools, dice, things like that, and uh, which the starter has, but this won't have, right? And, and in all cases, I urge you to check out AtomicMassGames.com and check out the, some of the latest errata and updates because there were there were some printing errors and, and things like that in the 501st boxes as well. So uh, just to make sure you're getting all the best and most up-to-date rules for your minis. Uh, that's what I would recommend. So moving forward, uh, I'm going to say suggest the upgrade card pack next. Now, this is a super low uh, price point, only $9.95, one of the cheapest items on this list. And the upgrade card pack, well, I'll call this upgrade card pack one because uh, there are multiple. There's actually two out at the time of me making this. And one of the things that this pack does is it uh, it basically addresses a lot of upgrades that came out that were only available in maybe one or two uh, expansions, and maybe it was in a, a faction you didn't play or whatever. So you're going to gain access to a lot of upgrade cards that just were kind of off limits to the Republic, as well as some duplicates of maybe certain more desirable upgrade cards. And this is going to allow you to have more ways to customize the armies and more options for the minis that you already have. Uh, so that's a good thing about that. Uh, the next item on this list is the Republic Specialists. Uh, this is a, just an all-around great, great upgrade card pack. You're going to be getting four minis in here. So the price point is a little high per mini. A little high per mini. Uh, but though, again, these are these are newer. These are high-quality miniatures. They're They're beautiful. The clones, clones are super fun to paint and all of that good stuff. But also the the minis and the roles that they fill are going to give your army some really cool new uh, diversity. Uh, one of the things in here is you gain a generic clone commander, which is a really cool thing to do because up to this point you might only have Obi Wan Kenobi 
an Anakin Skywalker. And those are expensive commanders. And so having a cheap or a cheaper generic clone commander gives you a ton of options in list building. It opens up a lot of points for you to add more units to your army and to have you know you know different type of stuff and different allocations of how you want to how you want to build your army. Maybe you want a lot more uh, you know phase one and phase two clones, or maybe you want to run three units of arc troopers and still have points left over for supports and things like that. You know, uh, or even heavy vehicles as you get down down into the into the weeds of the, of the faction. So having multiple options for commander is very, very cool. Uh, but also you're getting a medic and an engineer and a comms trooper. So these are different minis that can also go into your existing units. You can put these into your phase one or phase two clones. Hey, oh, do I want a medic in this unit? Okay, cool. And the medics for these guys don't heal as well, but they can also shoot. So they're combat medics, which is really cool. So again, really great little pack. It gives you also generic command cards in different ways to, uh, to be able to play the game. Just a lot of versatility that this opens up your existing collection to do a lot more. And I think that that's really cool. Cool, uh, and it's worth the price point. Uh, next would be the Phase 1 Clone Trooper Upgrade. Uh, this one is going to be more on the list if you started with the, the basic core set and you have some Phase 1 Clone Troopers. I definitely like the Phase 1 Clones. I like them more than the Phase 2 because the price point is just easier to afford. Uh, I usually would like to run uh, like one or maybe two units of Phase 2 Clones and then most of my core uh, of of phase, you know our phase one clones uh, in a lot of my my gar builds when I say gar it's galactic army of the republic most of the my republic builds are comprised majority of phase one clones uh, they're they're just they they run just about as good almost as good as the phase two clones and they're cheaper uh, and their upgrades are cheaper and all of that also upgrades like this give your phase one clones m new and more exciting options you get that specialist that has the free aim token which is going to be really really good. Uh, you you have you have a shotgun trooper in here, which gives you a really nice piercing attack. You know, there's a lot of cool new ways to upgrade your Phase One clones. Plus, it also can be an extra Phase One clone trooper unit on its own, um, which most people don't really use it that way. But it technically, is something else that you can do. We're we'll getting four extra minis here that can make you know four different. Uh, they can basically go into different phase one clone units, and it's two personnel, two heavies. Uh, if you've got just the two phase one clone units that come in the core set, all of a sudden now you can put like a, a personnel and a heavy from this and one, and a personnel from the heavy and this and then another, and have like a totally different phase one clone unit that's going to look and feel very different than the other one. So that's just a lot of versatility it gives you. And if you started with the phase one clones already, this is going to give you some great ways to use those units you've already got. Um, moving forward, uh, I'm going to throw out com Clone Commander or Clone Captain Rex. He's captain in this one. Um, and, uh, and no, Rex, is, Rex has gone through some changes. Uh, he's a slightly old. He was one of the first expansions that the Republic had. Uh, and he was really, really, really good at launch. Uh, his cards have changed. He's not as good as he was at launch. At launch, he was like the one of the first things you would ever buy. He was absolutely like incredible maybe even overpowered uh you know there was there were lists and, and a whole meta that was based on how good rex was uh he's less good now but he's still not bad uh and and also he works with the 501st as well so you can run him in a 501st specific list or just a general uh generic kind of republic list uh, and he's a little bit on the cheaper side at only 19.99 MSRP. Uh, you know, this was before the prices started really going up and a lot of products. And at least at the time of me recording this video, he's still at 19.99. I'm sure by by 2024, prices will go up some more, and we might see this guy at over $20 at some point. Uh, or maybe he'll be repackaged in another uh, in another box or in another bundle at some point, which would be pretty cool. But Rex is still okay. He's still a good commander, he's still solid, and he still works as a fairly inexpensive commander that has some synergy with clones already. Uh, speaking of synergy, uh, let's talk about the brand new clone commander, Cody. Uh, a little more expensive, but you're getting a little bit more here. And, uh, and Cody brings some interesting new mechanics to, to the clones. He's uh, putting out some observe tokens. He's got synergy with a lot of different things. This pack is a little more expensive. I think Cody may be better than Rex right now uh, for the faction as a whole. However, this this pack is almost twice as expensive, so um, 
the three minis you're getting here, you're basically getting a new commander, which is Cody, and then you're getting Waxer and Boyle, which are personnel upgrades that can go in Phase 1 or Phase 2 clone trooper units. So you're actually getting a lot of value in this pack. This one might be actually better to get before Rex, but it depends on which one you like better. Sometimes people will get them both. You can, all, you can run them together and kind of have Rex and Cody back together again side by side, which is something a lot of people are going to want to do, even if it's not the most efficient list. It's going to be fun to run, and that counts if you're number one. All right, bad rhyming aside. Um, no, Cody has a lot of synergy with Jedi. He's got a lot of synergy with vehicles. You're going to definitely want to run him with vehicles, um, regardless of which kind of pack you got. He also likes to run with three vehicles. So if you got both of those starters, you'll have a Bark Speeder and an ATRT. Uh, if you end up picking up one more vehicle pack, he'll wor he will work really nicely in a triple vehicle list which is definitely something that is possible. There are quite a few. There are like four different vehicles available to the Republic right now in early 2023, uh, possibly more in the future. There's definitely some that people really want to see, uh, and of course not all of them uh, are, are small enough to fit in the game of Legion. There's some really, really big vehicles out there, and I think a lot of us would love... I mean, it'd be fun to do, but um, but there's a lot available. And Cody's just a, a well-rounded new commander that's giving some some cool support to the units around him. And he's kind of long-range, too, which is pretty cool. Uh, moving forward, I'm going to throw out Grandmaster Yoda. Still a really, really cool, fun, and uh, interesting just I'd say maybe one of the highest fun factor characters in the game right now has been changed a little bit has seen some slight nerfs uh, with with certain green tokens and, and standby sharing uh, isn't something that he can do anymore but uh, but the price point is really low here 1795 one of the really cool things I want to point out with this is you're getting more than just a, a single uh, a single unit here. You actually, well, you're, you are getting a single unit. You're also getting uh, like a Chewbacca synergy card. I believe there's a uh, the Chewbacca card in here. So this is a bonus value if you happen to play multiple factions. More on this towards the end of the video. I'm going to go into some stuff if you play multiple factions as well. But you get some great, great upgrade cards in here. Um, the, some of the cards in here are actually going to be really good uh, with Anakin and or Obi Wan as well. So I really like the upgrades that come in here. If you're if you're a rebel player, also there's a way that you can run Chewbacca with these guys. There are also Wookiee packs, and a lot of that came out at the same time and synergized this together. Um, it, that some people really like. Again, it's a little bit better if you're playing multiple factions. So you might want to, if you play rebels, also I'd probably suggest looking into the, some of the Wookiee units that are available for uh, for both factions as well. The, the Republic has a little bit more emphasis on the Wookiee stuff. So you might want to look into that. A lot of that isn't on this list, though, because I'm not assuming that if you watch this that you're looking to play multiple factions. Uh, but one thing that's really cool about this is you're getting two different sculpts for Yoda, and there's different ways that you can build him. And so, in, and there's enough in here to actually build two whole versions of Yoda, which is really cool. A lot of people don't do that, and uh, you know, or, or a lot of expansions don't have you know multiple ways. To, to run. You can build them that way, you can build them that way, you can build them that way, and you can build two, uh, two whole minis, which is cool. You don't really need to do that, but it, I mean, the fact that you're getting two two plastic miniatures in one pack is not bad, especially at that price point. $17.95, that's a good price point for, for Yoda, and, he, and plus he's super good at leading a, a, a whole army. He's pretty cool. He's got a lot of support, and he's got a little bit of punch when he needs to have it. Um, moving forward, uh, hopefully at this point you've been playing lots of games. You don't want to just buy everything and not play. Once you've been playing the game a little bit more, and you've started to exhaust a lot of those battle cards, which are deployment, objective, and condition cards that kind of define the battlefield and what you're fighting over, uh, you may want to look into certain battlefield expansions. There are a lot of battlefield expansions that are out there. Um, some of them are useful, some of them are just for specific scenarios and don't really have like uh, organized play or tournament game tournament level game implications so they're just like hey this is just a fun side mission and nothing more uh, and some of them are like this is some fun side missions but they're actually missions that are going to carry over into the full game and vital assets is one of those comes with a bunch of little terrain pieces and uh, plastic bits that are actually meant to go into some of the uh, new battle cards that come into this game. And these are important. These are an important part of the game. They really change the way your game is played. 
and uh, and just important, especially if you ever plan on playing competitively, uh, you definitely want to get these. But even if not, they're going to change up the games, and they're really fun. Uh, new scenarios and things that are going to fit into the game. So you definitely want to have these because otherwise you're just going to burn yourself out on the same exact missions over and over again. So consider Vital Ascents once you're a little bit more, a little bit more experienced into the game. To a lesser extent, I'm also going to say Battlefield Supplies. Uh, it has only one new kind of mission, basically. It's got one deployment, one condition, one objective. They all kind of go together, but it happens to be a really great set of battle cards, and some of the most popular battle cards in all of the game's history are the three that come in this particular one. This one's a little cheaper, but it, it comes with less than what Vital Assets comes with, but it's something worth considering. Uh, and, you know, if... You're, you're like you've exhausted all that, and you want to get into some more possibly expensive stuff. Uh, again, you're, I think we're past maybe the budget portion of the video. Uh, if, and this is going into the little bit more of the fun factor point. Um, like if you are thinking of running a tank. I really like the tank. I really like the saber tank. Uh, it's fun. It's big. It's beautiful. It's a, like sometimes it's really nice to have just a big, nasty, you know, centerpiece type model. And the tank, uh, the, you know, the TX-130 saber class fighter tank does that for the Republic. Uh, it's, it's just a beautiful piece. It's a fun model to put together. It's a fun model to paint and base and do all your other cool stuff with it. 70 bucks. So it's not cheap. Uh, but it also works really well if you are, maybe you're thinking about running Cody and you wanted that triple vehicle. And if you're up to this point, like, hey, this might make a pretty fun third vehicle. And I think a lot of Cody lists will probably be running the support vehicles like multiple ATRTs or multiple uh, bark speeders and things like that. But I think a, a Saber Tank would be a fun addition to like a growing collection and give you a, a little bit different play style. Now, if you are a multiple faction person, I want to talk about that a little bit. There's another upgrade card pack, the Upgrade Card Pack 2. It's a little more expensive than the Upgrade Card Pack 1. Uh, and this has some new stuff. This came out at the same time as our Mercenaries and our Shadow Collective stuff came out, which is kind of like side, uh, like they're basically golden cards, right? They, they don't necessarily just go in any faction. They can only go in very specific factions, and it allowed a lot of the bounty hunters to have new cards. It also allowed for a lot of stuff to be compatible with the Shadow Collective, which is like Darth Maul's, you know, the, his Maul DeLoreans and, and his criminal syndicate. Um, but this card is kind of lower on that list because a lot of the stuff that comes in here is specific to certain factions only, uh, like Empire and, and uh, you know Separatist players definitely want to get this for, to have access to those new Bounty Hunter cards. Um, Shadow Collective players definitely want these also uh, for that AA5 alternate cards and stuff like that that comes in here. But there are also upgrade cards, the smaller upgrade cards in here, uh, and and some of them are really good, but. If you've got Yoda, like, like for example, I know a lot of players were looking for this because Yoda came with some great, great Force upgrade cards, and he was the only expansion that came with them, and maybe somebody didn't play Republic and didn't want to have to buy Yoda just to get a really good Force upgrade card that would work well on Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader or something like that, uh, and this was a great way to do that. Um, I feel like out of all of the factions in the game, uh, Republic is the one that needs this the least, but there are still good cards and some new cards uh, that came out uh, with this upgrade card pack. So there's still reason to pick it up. It's just less of a priority if you only play Republic. Uh, it's you know I think this is this one can wait a little bit more until your collection is grown and you're becoming more and more familiar with the game. And if you want to see everything that comes in here, by the way, all of these stuff I have unboxing videos for um, all of these except for the Battle Force boxes because those were just repackaging of units that I've already done unboxings of. So every every actual unit on here I've done an unboxing video of, and you'll be able to see those and see what comes in those boxes if you want to just search Krabok. Um, Legion upgrade card pack two or or whatever, and you'll 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 see those uh, unboxing videos. Um, again, we talked about the Wookies. If you're a multi faction player, uh, there's you know the Wookie Warriors were kind of like an update to an old Rebel Wookie Warriors box because there was a Rebels Wookie Warriors like almost the same as this, just slightly different artwork and a little bit older models. So this one they included all of that Rebel stuff with new physical models that are upgraded in hard plastic, upgraded models, but then they also added 
additional cards in here for the Republic and uh, some battle cards or command cards and uh, and different and multiple like a different a new type of heavy in different ways to build these. So it was like it's almost like two expansions in one, but still only enough to build the one whole unit. Um, you're also getting a Wookiee commander in here too. You're getting these like Wookies with they they can run with battle shields and all kinds of cool stuff. Like you're getting a lot of cards in here, and you, it's it's great. It's just a better value if you're a dual faction player. If you also play Rebels, it's an even better value. Um, but maybe you'll just like Wookiees. Maybe you really like Wookiees, and maybe these are going to be the first purchase you make, and that that's fine too. It's not actually a bad value. Um, they're just a little bit more of a niche play style. Um, Similar, if you also play the Imperials, you might want to look at getting the Lat LE. Uh, the Lat LE is that big helicopter type functionality. It, it kind of serves the uh, of the battlefield role that a helicopter would serve. You know, kind of like hovering above. You know, providing some maybe some fire. Uh, you know, shooting a little bit and then dropping off or picking up units. And, uh, and and it does that. It's not cheap, sixty four ninety nine. It's not the most combat effective unit. It, it, it can shoot. It's got some firepower. It's not the strongest unit in the game, but it does multiple things. Has different pilots and uh, the ability to drop off units really close to the battlefield and you know take them from the edge and drop them off in the middle and do stuff like that a little bit quicker than they normally would have been able to march there is also a pretty cool thing. It also happens to be a vehicle. Again, if you're looking for third vehicle options, this might be one. Um, and this has some cards that are unique to the Empire and some cards that are unique to the Republic. Uh, this one actually combos fairly well with Commander Cody. Uh, he's got some stuff uh, that kind of work off of Observe tokens. There's a pilot in here that uh, for the Republic that also puts out more Observe tokens. So there's there, you know there's some synergies there. Uh, so that's a, you know it's definitely something to consider. Uh, not maybe it's a little bit more of advanced with embarking and disembarking, loading up troops and having them drop off is a little bit more of an advanced play style as well. And for I guess my own personal experience with this, this is one of the most difficult models in all of Star Wars Legion to actually assemble. Uh, it was not easy. It took me uh, I think it was one of the maybe maybe the most difficult mob. Or, uh, or mob, most difficult model to assemble. It was uh, a lot of small pieces. The instructions uh, had a, a couple of notable um, inaccuracies, and so uh, I did a whole build video on in my unboxing of this. So if you do put one of these together, I suggest watching the unboxing. It's a build video also, where I kind of share with you some of my lessons learned on trying to assemble this thing. Uh, but uh, but it looks cool once it's put together. That's for sure. Uh, but uh, but not maybe not one of your first units to pick up. Um, and then just for for mentioning it, I'm gonna go ahead and mention uh, this is another battlefield expansion. Uh, it's the uh, the crashed escape pod battlefield expansion. Now this one comes with terrain. A lot of battlefield expansions come with terrain, and they come with some battle cards for for a specific scenario. But you can't just use those in your normal games. It's a special game all into itself, which I'm not a big fan of those usually. Uh, but what makes this one stand out is that it also comes with R2D2 and C3PO, uh, and and the problem is you tend to buy this just for R2-D2 and C-3PO. Most people that I know of don't buy this because they want to play the Crash the Escape Pod scenario, although some do, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the main draw for this pack is R2-D2 and C-3PO. Now, R2-D2, when he first came out, was incredibly overpowered. Uh, he was, And he's had to go through some changes and some points increases because he can allow you to win the game uh, with just his secret mission keyword. He's also a dual faction. Uh, you can run R2-D2 with the Republic as well as with the Rebellion. So that makes this a little bit less of a, a bad thing. However, R2-D2 comes in the Rebels' new battlefield, uh, their, their new battle box. So the Rebels don't have to buy this anymore. So it's not really, a, I mean, technically it's still a dual faction pack. But Rebel players probably don't need to get this as much anymore. This is really the Republic's only way to get R2-D2. Uh, and C-3PO is not his own unit. He just kind of he follows R2-D2 around. Um, so this is really your only way to get R2-D2 if you're a Republic player. And so that's a bit of a steep price point. I just wanted to throw this out there because uh, if you are looking up things, uh, you know, he's still not bad. He's still a, a, a viable unit to run in your Republic lists because of his secret mission um, options. Uh, where he can kind of sneak and like you won't. Sh they they have this thing where he's incognito and they won't shoot at him. Uh, and 
he can kind of sneak in. If he gets across enemy lines, he can score you a victory point, which is, this game has got, you know, it, a lot of times victory points are tied and a single point is, is, is make or break. So it's a big deal. Uh, but at the price point for that one small miniature is, that, you know, the one that you really care about, that R2-D2 miniature, is really rough. It's really, it's, you know, it's, it's really rough. But because it doesn't, it's not listed as an actual unit expansion, it's listed as a battlefield expansion, I think a lot of new players might miss that. So I wanted to point that out. All right, guys, that is going to do it for my what to buy first when on a budget video for the Galactic Army of the Republic. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know what you think down in the comments section. Don't forget to join our Discord. I'd love to have you in there. Join, become part of the discussion, and uh, let's, I'd love to share your thoughts. If you guys are at Adepticon this weekend, I hope you guys are having a wonderful time. And uh, I want to thank all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Hopefully you guys are doing well. May the Force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. So say we all. Party on, dudes. Be excellent to each other. Cowabunga. And you can't take the sky from me.